So this is really going to conclude the water cooling how-to series that I filmed probably about a month ago, maybe six weeks ago. That series covered everything that you needed to know about buying stuff for loops, fitting loops, fitting pumps, doing the tubing, plumbing it all up, and, 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 and. There's a link to those videos down in the description, so if you haven't seen any of those, uh, please do, do go and have a look. You've kind of come the wrong way around. This is the bit you would definitely do. After all of that, it'd be hard to drain a loop without having a loop. Anyway, I digress. So. This is not the most glamorous bit of water cooling. It's not probably the reason that you got into it, but you're almost certainly gonna to need to do this at some point. These loops require maintenance, and I would recommend, on average, you should be changing your water out probably every six months at least, probably doing a deep clean on that loop probably once a year every 18 months and I have got a video on that click on this card here and that will take it uh, take you through to it there's a great kit from Mayhem's the Blitz kit they do a couple of different versions which are absolutely fantastic for cleaning rads uh, and good for cleaning your loop in general and the reason that you're going to want to clear and flush out your loop every six months is you're going to get a build up of uh, kind of oxidization and rubbish that effectively gets stripped off of your blocks and you know if you haven't got really good anti-growth materials inside your fluid then potentially you're going to get a buildup of kind of like algae type stuff it's rare if you've used good fluid it's unlikely but i would still recommend a six monthly flush through now this assumes you followed my video about plumbing up your loop that you should be you should be putting a drain valve on your loop with a T-stop fitting. Again, click on that card up there. That will take you to the link to that video. Lots of people forget that step. They design their loops meticulously. They've got great bends and they don't think about how they're gonna get the fluid out. If you have done that, you can do it. Effectively, what you're gonna have to do is separate some of your fittings with a, a, with a bowl underneath and drain it out. But if you have followed it, it's a relatively straightforward process. Generally, what I use is just an off-cutting of flexible tubing with a barb fitting tightened down on the end that you can actually screw into the end of your T-stop fitting. So assume you've got a cap on the end of your T-stop, unscrew that, screw your scrap bit of tubing onto it, Make sure that you've got a big bowl or container. Typically what I do is I hang on to the bottles that my fluid came into. It's very rare that I buy pre-mixed fluid, uh, or should I say I do buy pre-mixed fluid. It's very rare that I buy concentrate that you then have to mix with distilled water. So you have a canister that's generally the right kind of size. If you don't have one, just get yourself any kind of you know milk container or something like that. Obviously wash it out water cooling fluid mixed with milk, probably not gonna be very nice. Anyway, once you've got your scrap bit of the tubing attached, you've got your container underneath, you want to undo your valve. Now, you may find that the water doesn't come out and you may sit there and think, my God, this is, this loop is defying the laws of physics. It's actually not defying the laws of physics, it's following them exactly. And you actually need to open another fitting or another valve, loosen uh, one of your stop-offs somewhere else in the loop to allow air into the loop. If you've got a decent reservoir, normally undoing one of your fittings at the top of that because you have to replace the water that's coming out of your loop with air. If there's nowhere for the air to get into your loop, there's no way for the water to get out of your loop. It's effectively like a vacuum. So once you've uh, opened those fittings, making sure you've got your T-stop closed, otherwise that's gonna shoot out and uh, potentially end up in a not good place. Open your T-valve, drain your loop out. You are gonna have to rock your case backwards and forwards. You're gonna find, particularly if you've got radiators mounted on the sides or on the top, as we have though, as, as we do in the SMA A8, you're gonna find it's quite challenging to get all of that liquid out. And the reality is, guys, you're, you're not gonna get all of the liquid out. As you start to take your tubing to pieces, whether it be hardline tubing or soft tubing, you are gonna have to put some bowls 
or some deep plates or something like that just to catch the residue as it drops out. For God's sake, try and keep it off of your components. Typically, I use lots of kitchen towel uh, and that can mop up anything that you can't catch with the bowls. Once you've got all of the fluid out, you can take whatever next step is uh, the step that you intend to do. If it's a six monthly clean out, probably just running some distilled water through. The loop will be absolutely fine. If you're doing a deep clean, then do what you're doing with that. And if you're replacing your loop with something more elaborate, then by all means, uh, move forward and do that. I do recommend any fittings that you take apart. You do a very thorough inspection of all of the O-rings in there, particularly where you've had fittings that have been tightened down all the way whilst they've maintained a watertight uh, seal whilst you've actually had the loop in place. If you've over tightened some of those fittings, the O-rings can become brittle and they may have started to split apart. Typically I buy myself bags of you know spare O-rings so that I can replace them. But again, be careful. Typically your G1 quarter threads that go into your blocks, you can get pretty standard fittings for those, but you, you could have all sorts of variety of sizes uh, inside the fittings where the tubing goes in to make sure that you use something that matches the specification of the product that you're using it on. So I think this neatly ties off the water cooling series that I've done. I can't think of too much else that we need to cover. I hope you're really well wherever in the world you are. Please like and share this video, subscribe if you're not, and I'll see you in the next one.